This presentation is called Multi-Section, When You Need to Bisect More Than Once. My name is Jim Keenan. This presentation concerns a subject that falls into the area of debugging or QA. And what I hope you get out of it today is at least some idea that there is a step beyond simple bisectioning, which can be useful to you when you have uh, some complex debugging problems. So, multi-section is, for me, short for multiple bisection. But, of course, that raises the question, what is bisection? Well, Wikipedia tells us that bisection is a method used in software development to identify change sets that result in specific behavioral change, mostly employed for finding the patch that introduced a bug. Code bisection has the goal of minimizing the effort to find a specific change set. So when we bisect, we have a series of commits. Let's say commit 0 to commit 100. Commit 0, all our tests were passing. Commit 100, there's a failure. At what commit between 0 and 100 was the failure introduced? Finding that out is the point of bisectioning. And what bisectioning does is it tests at 0, 100, divides that into 2, tests at commit 50, makes a decision as to whether to go up, to, uh, see what, on the basis of pass or fail at commit 50, whether we go back to commit 25 or up to commit 75. We just basically bisect the set of commits until we find the one that introduced the bug. When we are bisecting, we have to develop a measure of of success, and that has to be a Boolean condition, true or false, pass or fail, yes or no. Very, you know, very simple to understand. And bisection typically assumes a simple progression from pass to fail. So that suppose that we began with a pass, that's the green P there, and we had a series of commits that we didn't test, so their status is unknown, and finally, we come to another commit, F there in red, where we know that there is a failure. So we know that there's, uh, there's a bug been introduced somewhere along between P and F, but we don't know which one. We don't know the real results of each commit in between. That's currently unknown to us. So our typical goal is to locate the first failing commit. But what if the progression is not so simple? Suppose that we observe a, prog a progression of per commit results, such as at the top, P, a series of unknowns, and then an F for failure. Then suppose that in the middle of this series of commits, where I have the X, we have a failure, but not necessarily the same type of failure as I observed at F the final commit in the sequence. Suppose that X is a different kind of failure from F. Suppose that at X, the test file simply fails some unit tests, whereas at F, the test file seg faults. It doesn't even run to completion. So what if the real but hidden progression is like this, PP, some Xs, and then some Fs? Simple bisection will be insufficient to identify all the change points. Now, where in the real world might you need to identify multiple change points in the results of testing an open source, uh, a, a complex application? Well, that application is likely to be large and complex. It, it could be an application that needs to run on many different platforms, and or it could be an application that can be configured to build in many different ways. Perhaps the, com the combination of the number of platforms to test and the number of configurations is so great that it, there are just simply too many combinations to test feasibly. Well. That's the sort of application we're talking about. And there's, but there's one other thing we have to mention. We have to ask, what infrastructure would this application require in order for us to be able to identify a series of change points through a technique of multiple bisection? 
Well, that application would have to be stored in a version control system that provides at least this functionality. We need to be able to list the change sets in chronological order, check out in <coughs> individual change sets, and clean up the working directory after building a given uh, change set. If the VCS provides bisectioning, that's helpful, but surprisingly, it's not actually necessary. So let's talk about a real-world application in a real-world version control system. And for argument's sake, we'll call this application Perl. Perl runs on many different platforms. It can be built with many different configuration options. The total number of combinations of configuration options with which Perl can be built is somewhere north of 10 to the 100th power. There is probably not enough time left in the history of the universe to be able to test every possible Perl configuration. Moreover, Perl is stored currently in a real world version control system, namely Git. And Git provides us with three functions that we will need for our multi, multiple bisection. Git rev list, Git checkout, and Git clean. There's Git bisect. It's useful for simple bisection, but we'll see its limitations. So, I'm a member of the Perl 5 porters, the group that maintains the Perl 5 core distribution. And in the core distribution, we have a program called porting bisect.pl. It's a Perl program, I believe it was originally written by former pumpkin Nick Clark, and it's essentially a nice wrapper around Git bisect to handle many of the, of the situations that we typically face. Simple world, real world case, a couple months ago, we were testing CPAN modules against Perl 5 bleed, and in the course of investigating some bug ticket, I noticed that bleed, that's the cutting edge of the Perl 5 uh, distribution, the head in Git repository, was breaking a test in a CPAN module called JCode. So I ran porting bisect.pl with the configuration options that you see there. And I was able to identify the commit that broke the test in JCode. It was this commit here, ff 8 8 by Carly Williamson, who is sitting right down there. It's just an ugly rumor. Yeah. And <clears throat> so in my bug ticket, I provided the output of the failing tests. Look at the, what you got and what you expected. Isn't that ugly? And down at the bottom of the ticket, I said, Carl, can you take a look? All right. So of course, Carl did take a look, and Carl fixed the bug. <laughs> and he made a commit. And I tested the, the commit by building Perl 5 bleed after his commit and successfully installing this module J code. That's a case of simple bisection used to diagnose and solve a problem. However, we've also had some complex real world cases. For example, uh, three, now three development cycles ago during our 5.25 dev cycle, we began to experience test failures on version 11 of the FreeBSD operating system. So, uh, and those, those failures concerned locales. In, loca in uh, computing, a locale is a set of parameters that defines the user's language, region, and any special variant preferences that the user wants to see in their user interface, such as do you use commas or periods to separate uh, numbers by thousands. Okay. We knew that we had a test in our core distribution uh, called liblocale.t, and that passed when we released 5.24 in May of 2016. This passed on all platforms, including FreeBSD. We then began the next development cycle. We committed new source code, locales, and tests in, starting in May and June of 2016. And we did an extensive smoke testing of, these, of this new code and these new tests on Linux, and we got passes for many months. However, during that time, we were not conducting smoke testing on any FreeBSD operating system. So we come to September 2016, and uh, we know that FreeBSD 11, which was then in its development stage called Current, that 
Pearl 524 was passing, but we didn't really know the status of Pearl 5 bleed, the head in our repository. That was unknown. In October of 2016, FreeBSD 11 was promoted to release status. That is, that's the production release. But we still had not tested Perl 5 bleed on FreeBSD 11. So I became concerned about this. And what I decided to do was to learn the art of installing virtual machines and running tests in virtual machines. And I installed a FreeBSD 11 virtual machine on this Linux laptop that, from which I am presenting. And then I submitted a smoke test report in October of 2016. And that first report was a fail. And we can, perhaps if we have time, we can actually look at, at the failure. Now, this was concerning because it meant that at some point between May of 2016 and October of 2016, we had introduced code into the Perl 5 core distribution that was generating uh, test failures in one particular test on one important operating system. But at that point, we didn't know where the failure had been introduced. Uh, uh, when I ran this in October, I got uh, an error message such as you see here, liblocale.t failed, no plan found in tap output, which is usually a sign that the test file seg faulted. So what I did was I uh, tried running the test file by itself outside of, the te outside of uh, make test, and I found that of 680 unit tests in this file, the test was failing with a seg fault at test 380. So I, first I used porting bisect.pl because I wanted to find out where was the commit that introduced the seg fault that, called, that caused the file to fail, that caused the overall smoke test report to fail. So liblocale.t identified one particular commit, this 4EBEFF1. And so I tried to build Perl on FreeBSD 11 at that commit, and I got a failure. But it was a different failure from the one that I got when I tested at, he at the head of uh, Perl 5 in, in October. In this report, the test file ran to completion, but it had two test failures. So somewhere in, that, in a series of commits, we had one, uh, one change set that caused some unit tests to fail. And later, we had another change set that caused the file to seg fault and not run to completion. So between May and October, there were 220 commits to the core distribution. My first approach to this was to capture the output of liblocale.t for a commit by commit comparison. As you might guess, this was non-scalable. The program took over eight hours to run. So I figured we needed a new tool which would apply the principle of bisectioning, to which is to reduce the number of commits to be run. But instead of just looking for pass or fail, would focus on differences in the entire test output, the entire tap, as we might say, rather than just the test result, pass or fail. So I wanted to ask, has the output of liblocale.t at commit n changed from the immediately previous commit? Simply identifying the first failing commit would not be sufficient because we knew that liblocale had failed in at least two different ways. So we need to identify each commit at which the test output changed. And after we identify the first change in test output, we have to repeatedly bisect until we find all the points in which all the test output from liblocale.t changed. To accomplish this, I eventually ended up writing a CPAN module called Devel Git Multibisect. With this module, I was able to identify the failing test file within the Perl 5 test suite. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, let me say this. What Devel Git Multibisect does, how you prepare for it, is you identify the first failing, the, the failing test file from your smoke test reports. You identify the last known pass change set. 
and this becomes the starting change set for the purpose of bisectioning. Let's call that index zero. Then you identify the change set at which failure was reported via your smoke testing, and this becomes the end change in the targeted range. So what DevelGit MultiBISEC does is it assembles a list of all change sets in the targeted range. It configures, builds, uh, builds Perl, that is, uh, at each of those, at, at the start and end points, and runs a test file, at, runs the critical test file uh, at the start and end points. You capture the whole output of the file, of the, I'm sorry, the whole output of, uh, of the test run, the tap, and you redirect that to a file on your system, and you take an MD5 hex digest so that you have a, a, you know, a 64 character string that describes the content of that file. And you assign that to a particular com uh, commit in the list. You divide that change set in two. Uh, you build at the midpoint. Midpoint of 220 commits would be commit number 110. You run the test, you redirect the output of that test to a file, you take an MD5 hex digest of the file, and you store it in your list. And you compare that MD5 hex digest to your start and end MD5 hex digest. So you're doing a string comparison, right? Is this equal to this? String comparison is a Boolean condition. You have, and when you have that Boolean condition, you have something that you, you can use to say, is this or is this not the failing commit? Or is this or is this not a commit that introduced a change, a transition? So the result of this is you get an array with one element for each change set. If a change set did not need to be run in the, in the, in the multi-sectioning process, its value is simply an empty string. A transition is a pair of elements where the MD5 hex digest value at commit n minus 1 is different from the at commit n. And we do the string comparison of the adjacent digest needed for bisection. So the result in this particular case was that over a range of 220 commits, the output of liblocale.t changed only three times between these pairs of indices I show here. In the first case, the Perl 5 porter who committed the uh, code simply added one unit test. But of course, when you add a unit test, you change the output uh, of the tap. And so the, this change in, in a test description uh, resulted in a transition, but it was a transition from one pass to another. However, a bit later, the committer added two unit tests. One of the unit tests failed. It was graded not okay. It was, we, the tap was not okay. And so we had a pass at commit 58 and a fail at commit 59. And the, you know, at this point, we recommend a review of the source code changes. A bit later, between indexes 64 and 65, that's where that seg fault was introduced after unit test 380. We got a fail, in, we were already having a fail at commit 64, but we have a different failure at commit 65 because at commit 65, it's not simply a failing unit test, it's a seg fault. And again, we recommend review of source code changes. So, Bisection typically focuses on identifying a single commit via a Boolean test. But when you actually have a series of failures, you may need more information in order to diagnose the problem. You may, for example, need the full test output, not just pass or fail. You, and we need a way to reduce test output to a value which can be an argument in a Boolean comparison. We need to find out all the commits where the test output changed. For that, you need a process of multiple bisection or multi-section. And for at least the Perl 5 core and the CPAN distributions, DevelGit multi-bisect provides that functionality. There's lots more slides in the bonus slides. Uh, and since we're, uh, we're running into the, uh, we have no talk immediately following here. I'll be happy to stay in the room and answer questions at, at, you know, as you may have them. 
Other questions now? Yes, sir. Because you don't, because all the, uh, when you start, uh, the results for all the commits between the start commit and the end commit are unknown, right? So if it were simple bisection and your first result was a pass, right, you'd say it didn't, the, the problem did not occur in the first half of the commits, it occurred in the second, right? But here you have to account for the possibility that uh, at the, say, the midpoint of the, of the run, the bisection, the, the result was fail, but it was a different type of failure. Did, 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 I, did that I think, get? I think, I think, so he reduces the pass fail to an MD5 digest on the output of this thing. And so you can have two different successes with, with the, and that is still passed, but the MD5 is Well, once you've once you've completed the run, the calculation of the uh, uh, of the MD5 hex digest is, is simple, and then you're just plugging that into a list. But if you have two passes, and the pass is different than MD5, you're going to do a bunch of extra work, potentially find issues that have already been solved. Yeah, but that's not the point. Uh, all I can say is you're possibly correct, but this was the, uh, this was, this was the algorithm suggested by the problem at hand. And this, this occurs infrequently enough that I don't, I don't have a lot of runs to suggest where to revise the code because it, the revision would be very deep in the code, you know, it'd be, you know, because the, the, the actual de place to determine what to do after a pass or failure is kind of deep in the code. And so it was simply just to let it be. Yes, Henry? I think the again that's another possibility, but uh, in other instances from this, it has not been a case of like one is a, one is a seg fault, one is a regular test failure. So I wanted a procedure that was sort of general enough to handle these vi these various cases. Yeah, but you, but you don't know where the seg fault is at the, at the beginning. So you don't, uh, and, uh, and you, you don't know how many different uh, points of transition there were in, this, in the series of commits. Because there can be, you know, there can be three, four, five, you know, different places where the tap output of a particular file changed. And, uh, you want to be, and at least I wanted to be able to identify each of them so that I could uh, say. It's just a layer of sugar on bisect, really. It's like an extra sugar. Yeah, but we're not actually in develop git multi bisect. I do not use git bisect. I assemble the list uh, of commits and I manually apply the you know, the mathematical formula for bi bisection. Uh, so I, I, don't, uh, I don't need to call git, git bisect. We use that, we use git bisect in porting bisect.pl, but it, um, it was not necessary for this.
Yes. In the, in the back. Yeah, uh, in uh, in the two cases that I was concerned with, namely the Perl 5 core distribution and CPAN distributions, uh, or relatively simple CPAN distributions, uh, th the I needed to filter out timestamps, uh, and I did that. And uh, in a in a later example of this, where the failure in the Perl 5 core distribution was taking place during make rather than make test, right? Where, uh, and this was like, this was a case where Perl was being built on Linux with very particular and strange configuration options that had not been tested in three years. And the smoke tester, the person, resume testing after a hiatus of three years, so suddenly we're getting these smoke test failures with these obscure options. And the, in the, when I first tried multiple bisecting there, it proved difficult because if a failure is taking place during make, you're getting line numbers in the source code reported. And those line numbers, say in sv.c or other source code files, change around. So I had to filter out the line numbers. So this, so for the for whatever, whatever source code body that you think you might want to apply multiple bisectioning to, you're going to have to apply some hacks to to handle these uh, these uh, situations. Um, you know, so that you can get files that when you take their MD5 hex digests you can compare them and the comparison is a meaningful one. So in, in your specific example, you, you found one change that was un, uninteresting because it was, it was the past, but then you had two that were failures. I'm curious which one was, was the root cause of your issue that you were trying to do, or, or, or were they actually interacting in any way? Well, the thing, here comes the true confession. In the month that it took me to write this module and to fine tune it such that I could reproduce the, the sequence of failures, Carl fixed the bug. <laughs> so this, did, this arrived a bit late at the scene for the correction of this particular bug, but at least we had the, you know, I had the technique. And then this, during this past development cycle, we had this new variation where it wasn't a failure in a, uh, in, a a test, in the test suite, it was a failure during make with these obscure configuration options, and that led me to write a subclass of Develget uh, Multibisec to focus on errors at the build, at the build stage. And, um, you know, and I, and once again, by, by in the time that it took me to, you know, fine tune the, the module, uh, Carl or Tony Cook or somebody had identified the bug, so this is a this is a you know a minor addition to our repertoire. Uh, yes, sir, in the back. Speak up, please. Yeah, uh, until two days ago, I had never studied the test two output. Uh, and uh, I discussed this a bit with Chad. And although I actually discussed it more in the question of the, the smoke testing that is done by people, out, you know, people on behalf of, of the core. Uh, and uh, there's a possible, there's a, you know, th that's a possible ex extension. Um, you know, I first wrote this a couple years ago and 
test two had not developed it to that level uh, at this point. But it's certainly a possibility. As a, you know, th uh, this is this is you should note in the under the Devel classification on CPAN, which means it's a, it's a developer's tool, which almost certainly means that there are some hacks involved, and that what's more important for you today is to take away the concept of the possibility of needing multiple bisectioning and the concept of trying to figure out a way that you can get a Boolean condition that with which you can use to evaluate the results of a run of your program at any given commit. That's the important thing. Right? You may have a large code base at work uh, that you, know, you cannot feasibly test at every commit and you may need to uh, uh, to look at this module, not necessarily to run it immediately, it might, might work, it might not, but to use it as a design pattern for your, your debugging. Carl? Yeah, and you know, in three years, we've, we, I've only come across two situations in the core distribution where this was seriously needed, but people here in their day jobs maintain code bases that are much larger than Perl's and uh, than, the, than the Perl 5 uh, core, so it might be useful there. So, any other questions? Thank you very much.